even though we can use G42 or G41 with tool compensation uh, to create our tool path, we still need to be able to calculate the actual location of the tool based upon the tool offset in order to estimate the total travel time and therefore the total machining time both cutting and non-cutting. So here's a simple case of a tool that's moving along two surfaces of the workpiece that are perpendicular to each other and they're oriented with respect to the y and x axes. If we were to use G41 or G42, we could create those surfaces. But the question is, what is the actual path that the tool follows? Well, if we look at the uh, tool, we note that it will have to be tangent to those two surfaces, or as you can see here, the extension of those two surfaces, in order not to cut that corner. And so our condition here is the tool with radius r is tangent to the two dashed lines. If it's tangent, then it is offset from those two lines, uh, which represent the y and x axis offset. Uh, so we know exactly where the tool is. If we know this corner point, we just have to add r in x and subtract r in y, and we know the location of the tool. Now that's a very simple case. What happens when one of the surfaces is not uh, oriented with respect to the axis? And here we see a case where we've got a surface that is parallel to the x-axis, but then the other surface is at an angle, some unknown angle theta, that we would determine from the design specification. Well, the same principle holds in that uh, one of the lines will be oriented with respect to the axis. We have to be tangent to that, and so we have the extension line here, and we also have an extension line for the surface that is at an angle of theta with respect to the previous surface. So the tool still needs to be tangent. And we note here this relationship, if it's tangent to both of the extension lines, then this bisector of the angle will pass through the center of the tool at that point. Again, we're trying to find where the tool is located. In order to find that, we have to use a magic triangle here and note that we're trying to find this green segment given that the angle, of course, here is theta over 2 because the angle here is also theta over 2. Well, in the y direction, our offset is still r because, again, we are tangent to the extension along the x-axis, but in terms of the delta from the x, what we're going to have to do is find this green segment. Well, we can use the magic triangle with our angle theta over 2, and we already know what r is, uh, this side of the triangle. Uh, so then we can calculate that offset in x based upon the tangent relationship. So the tangent of theta over 2 is going to be r over this d, which corresponds to the green segment. And then, of course, we can solve for d. Now we know the offset in the x direction. We already have the offset in the y direction. So we can determine uh, the location of the tool with respect to this vertex uh, that corresponds to where those two surfaces meet. Well, what happens when none of the surfaces are aligned with our axes? Then we have the most general case. The principle is still the same. We note the extension lines and that the tool is going to have to be tangent simultaneously in order not to cut off that corner there. So again, we will find our offset D, but note that D is at an angle, in this case beta, so we would have to know beta uh, based upon our workpiece setup. 
So we're assuming that beta is given. And of course, we had theta from before from the design specification. So our value for D, which is uh, that side of this triangle, is still the same, R over the tangent of theta divided by 2. But now what we really want to find in this case is our delta Y and delta X, our offsets. And as you can see here, we have to create another triangle in order to find delta X. Delta Y, of course, will just be uh, <clears throat> the hypotenuse of our initial triangle that we had from before. So given these two triangles and the fact that we know beta and of course theta over 2, we can calculate our delta x as d, which we've already determined, times the cosine of beta. And then the delta y, which is the hypotenuse, of course is related by uh, cosine uh, or sine, uh, depending on which angle you choose. And now we have d divided by cosine of theta over 2 will be our delta y. Now that we know our delta y and delta x, and we know this uh, corner point up here, we can determine the location of the tool. An alternative way of looking at this general case is uh, that we have a possibility of four circles that are tangent to those two lines. So if we look at those four circles under the same conditions, uh, then we don't need to have the angles theta and beta. All we need are the representations of the lines. So here we can see we've got two uh, implicit forms of the two lines, and of course that would be based upon the design specification. Given those two lines, we simultaneously solve for the circle that intersect the two lines. If you do that, you're going to end up with a solution of this form where the x and y location of the tool is based upon the parameters of the two lines. And so that would be the, the most general case uh, of calculating the location of the tool for two planar surfaces. Now what happens when you have a G02 or G03 that joins to a linear move. So here we see an arc segment and a line. The arc segment uh, is based upon our large radius r, and then we have our small radius of the tool r. In order not to cut off the corner here where the linear segment and the arc segment join, we're going to have to move farther and that distance is based upon the same type of condition as before. We have to be tangent to the extension of this linear surface, and we have to be tangent to the extension of this arc. Based upon that condition, then of course we can solve uh, for our displacement from the center of our arc, and we know where the center is because when we wrote the G02 and G03, we would have to input that into the specification. So all I have to find out is this distance D, and we already know that our displacement is going to be R, the tool radius, from this linear surface, our linear segment here. So D, of course, based upon the hypotenuse being R minus R and using our triangle here, we can calculate using Pythagorean theorem. So that would be one approach. Or using your trig functions, you can calculate D based upon the cosine of the angle here. And so now we know this displacement in uh, the Y direction. We've already got the displacement in the X, and therefore we know where the uh, center of the tool is right here. Well, what happens when uh, those linear segments are at an angle? It gets a little more complicated. Uh, the principle, again, will remain the same in that our tool, as you can see here, under these conditions has to be tangent to the circle representing the 
arc, the G02, G03, and the tool has to be inside the circle, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have a representation of our linear segment, which is AX plus BY plus C equals zero. So we know uh, what that is from the design specification. We also know the center of the arc that we're moving through because, again, we determine this in order to define the G02 and G03. So we want to find the location of the tool, which we denote here as XT and YT. Well, we can do the same kind of thing that we did before with the two linear segments, and that is simultaneously solve for the circle that uh, intersects both the larger circle R and also intersects our linear segment based on AX plus BY plus C. So if you do that, you're going to end up with this representation and you should note that it has the form of a quadratic equation which means there are two possibilities for the location of that circle and of course the tool could be here or it could be over here and be tangent to the circle as well. Note that we're only interested in this location so you would have to test to make sure you are on the right side of that line, otherwise you're going to end up cutting off that corner. 